Welcome to Narrowboat the James Bill. Hope you're well, thanks for joining me. Well, this is one of my last days in this little setting, and it's nice here. Yeah? It's Sunday today. Morning. <laughs> right. 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 Everyone who passes along here stands here and stares at a house talking about how nice the hanging markets are, which they are right. So my plan today is to put the back bumper on and my fenders. And then this evening I'm going to go to see Bond film, but before then, yeah, quite a few bits to do on the boat. Before I get moving again in a couple of days time, I've got to do a couple of uh, safety bits on the boat. So I've got the rear bumper to put on, which Carol bought me. At the moment, I'm using it in the dinette as a uh, footrest, and it works really well. It's like the perfect height for it. It's got the right kind of amount of uh, cushioning, um, but it's rather impractical. It weighs a ton. It's got three chains hanging off it. So as a footrest, it's, um, it's good, but not the best. Um, so I've got to attach it onto the back of the boat. The other thing I've got to do is put some more fenders up. Um, and that means tying knots, which you know about me and knots. Um, so to put this up, the boat had two of these eyelets already hanging off the back. The actual bumper has got three chains off it. So there's one on each side and then one at the top. But there's nowhere here for me to anchor it on securely. I can put it onto that, but it's not secure. So I might have to see if I can do something about that. Um, I don't really want to chain it around this, around the rudder or anything. That'll look awful, around the tiller, that'll look awful. Um, so I've got some extra chain. I've got some of these, and I've got some kind of rubber tubes for the chains to go through so it doesn't jingle jangle on the boat. Um, and I've also got some of these tighteners on each side Oh yeah, it weighs a ton. <sighs> to be honest, this is a two-person oh. job. Um, right. Oh my god, how am I gonna do this? Stab myself. Right, so I hook it on there. So it secures it so it doesn't fall in the cut. It's on like the angle of the boat, the V, so it's not going to rest brilliantly. It's going to be more an angle like that. I can tighten this one up a bit. The advantage of having these tighteners is that you can adjust it a little bit when it's on. Well, uh, you could have done if I'd set it in the middle, which I haven't. I've set it at the end, so I can't adjust it. The only thing I can do is loosen it, which I don't want to. If anything, I want to tighten it. been uh, set back slightly um, the eyelet there has just snapped off into the cut you may remember or the eagle eye amongst you may remember that this one had been bent back that one's in fairly decent shape 
but that one had been bent back. So I used my claw hammer to bend it out a bit so I could put the chain through it. And when I did, I saw a little crack appear and then uh, upon moving it a little bit, it just snapped straight off. So I'm glad it snapped off under the screwdriver and didn't snap off with my bumper on it and then having the bumper falling in the cut and dragging down or whatever like that. So that would have been a nightmare. So um, now I'm faced with a bit of a dilemma. I can either do the cheats way, which is wrapping the two chains around those two uprights there and having it down that way, which would look a bit crap, or the uh, longer winded way is to, I can't buy anything like that today, I wouldn't have thought, but I could buy an eyelet with a, like an M8 bolt coming out the back of it, probably in bronze or brass or something like that, drill it through, bolt it on the, nut it on the other side, and then paint it black. And it might look a bit like that. I can't grind that one back either, because I've got nothing to grind it back with. And if I was to do that with sandpaper, I'll be there until this boat's 100. Right, I've got to go to Hemel and get myself some bits for this now. But I'm also gonna pop by Will's house. He's uh, asked me for four pints of milk. And I'm gonna ask him to do my washing up. Well, for some hot water. I could have actually come to this B&Q by a narrow boat. But it had taken me the best part of half a day to get here and back. So I jumped in the Fiesta flame. Here in a flash. I'm now in Will's workshop, which is a lovely little space. It's really nice. Um, I've come up here because I need to use the jigsaw. I need to use the jigsaw to make my curtain rails. Um, well, I don't really, because that's quite easy to cut through. Uh, that's the rail for the curtains in all the five windows, but I need to make the brackets for them to fit onto the wall. Um, I've seen a few brackets, but basically stick out a mile. I don't need anything that sticks out that far. It needs to kind of come out from the wall by about well, just under an inch, basically. So I'm using some of this old oak that I've got left over from the fireplace, and I'm basically going to make something like that. Well, this is what I've made. Um, I'm going to finish it off a little bit, but essentially that's it. So it's just a little oak bracket, which I'll then put a bore a hole, 20 mil hole through, not all the way through, just kind of in that bit there, halfway through. And then the roll, bit, the rail will be able to kind of slot into that. I'll glue it in place. And then this has these two little bits here, which means it can be countersunk screws into the, um, into the wall. And then the end of it will just be a nice bit of oak. And then I'll paint the rail white. That'd be the plan. I was going to do it out of steel and use, two, use steel rails, but there's quite a lot of it. Five windows. I need a rail at the top and a rail at the bottom. And uh, steel is quite expensive. So I'm just using this dowel. I can always update it or change it one day, but for the moment, this will be all right. So I've got a few of these to do. Actually, I've got loads. I've got top and bottom rails. So I need four per window, five windows. 20 of these things. So using a vise, I'm just cutting them all out from the template and then sanding wheel just to get a nice smooth curve on it. Will's just making a cup of tea. He's gonna come in in a minute. I'm handing them over to him and he's helping to sand them off and give them a bit of a polish and a bit of a finish up. And uh, then we're gonna get cracking on sorting out the ring, which is coming off the bolt I bought. Well, this was the best I was able to get, which is an M10 bolt with a hoop at the end, but it's going through a ring. So I need to cut the ring off it. That's the plan. And then I should be able to use that bolt. I'll trim it down a little bit because it's way too long, but this might work. <laughs> Okay, it's a bit of an improvisation, but this is gonna work. So I've bought myself one of those, like a, basically a bolt with a hoop at the end of it, which is the same size as this one. 
So that's good, it's gonna look the same on the boat. Um, and so all I need to do is drill a hole as close to this one as I can, feed it through, and it'll, um, yeah, it'll look the same. Then I'll put some bitumen on it one day when I can get, get myself some. You can't buy it in a small enough tin for that, so, but I need to re-black the boat anyway. So uh, yeah, I'm gonna drill through with that with an, M8, with an M10. I think I'll have to leave those little bits on for the time being. So this one, I think I'm probably gonna sit on the outside of that. Can't be too far away, I want it to be the same kind of angle on the chain. Oh, that's the result. I managed to get it out. So it's on a, uh, it's on a thread, which basically means I've now got a hole that I can put this one through now, which also means that this whole setup was exactly the right thing. That's all it was. It was just one of them coming through. Typically, this one's too big. So I need to drill through it. That's a result. So I've got some washers to get it nice and tight. And then I've got some bolts. Or some nuts even. Right, so I now have one on both sides. I'm happy that I didn't have to, I could kind of utilize the existing hole, which is a right result. on hasn't fallen in I can't really do much with this I can put that chain onto there but that's just being held on by luck at the moment I guess I could bend that thing back but it's probably gonna snap off if I try to do that so um, uh, I don't really know what to do about that but anyway this is working there's a bit of flex in them so if I tighten these up Yeah, that's good. That's really good. Come on, mate. I like that colour. Thanks, yeah. mate. What is it? Bethnal Green. Bethnal Green, right, nice. Yeah. It's nice and sagey, isn't it? It's yeah, lovely. yeah. It's a, um... That's what colour I want my blinds. Yeah, yeah, no, that'd go with your other colours you're picking. Lovely. It's like a 1950s coach. It yeah, is, yeah. like an old Bedford van yeah. or something. We were just talking yeah, about yeah. it. I think I've even seen caravans painted that yeah. like the, the old vintage caravans and stuff. Did yeah. you do it yourself? Yeah. Oh, nice. Everything but the sign writing. Yeah, good job. Nice. Thanks. Very smart. Yeah, it's getting there. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. See ya. I love these colours. So this is, um, this is excellent. This is working well. The only thing I'm thinking is that it's probably safer that way with the hook going over that way than it is that way. So I'm just going to loosen this one off now and then see if I can turn that one around a bit. Yes.
So the main thing is basically, does it protect the rudder? And yes, it does. Kind of an overhang there by maybe half a foot, which is pretty good. Excellent. Um, the only thing I haven't put on are these chain guards, which I think I will do that. Now I've got all the kind of the measurements right. The thing is, I don't know if that little nugging's going to fit through that. There we go, that's looking brilliant. Well happy about that. I'm going to lock the, uh, the top one off if I can't utilise it. But that's fantastic. So front and rear bumpers are good. This is the Queen Slow Gin that Carol's bought me like a gallon of. It's really nice. It's using slows from the gardens of Buckingham Palace. Um, these are slows. So that's what they look like. And this is a good example. See that then with the kind of the speckling of the purple kind of bits of dark blue and then you get some kind of black looking ones like that which are oh yeah pretty black looking so these ones here have been picked by will um up in ashridge so uh i haven't been out picking yet but these are them they've already been frozen um the idea of freezing them is because it then splits the skin so when you then put it in the gin and put them in the uh in the kilner jars the uh there's more kind of juice comes out because the skin's been split so that's the idea this is like cooking with uh keith floyd right okay so these are the kilner jars these were current these were previously used for um storage of well let's call it herb so these ones might have a certain piquancy to them no, uh, no problem. Okay, so uh, I'm not using any sugar. Um, I've always used sugar before, but I'm not going to do it this time. Loads of people have said don't do it. See, you know, kind of sweeten it at the end um, because the more sugar you use, it turns to alcohol. And if you're using good gin, then you shouldn't need any additional alcohol. Um, I've always done this with like the cheapest gin you can get, um, which given the fact there's only two ingredients, gin and slowberries, kind of think, well, you're kind of robbing the drink of a decent ingredient if you're using the crap stuff. So um, I've delved into Carol's cupboard and I've got myself just a little selection of some of the gins that I've amassed over the last couple of weeks or months. Um, these two are all way too special, so I'm not going to use them. So I think I'm going to go in with the Bombay Sapphire stuff. This one here, though, Star of Bombay, is 47.5%. So we'll go with that first. It's quite straightforward. Yeah, once it's all kind of, I don't know, fermented is that the right word? Basically, once it's all fermented you strain it through muslin to, uh, you know, muslin cloth. So it doesn't matter if it's got the stalks and stuff on it or, you know, little bits of grit. I used to like painstakingly um, take all the stalks off and then you realize actually there's no need at all. I don't think I'm gonna be able to fill two jars so I think I'm just going to do one for the time being. I'm going to have to go out picking. So yeah kind of fill it up as much as you want. The more in there the better and then oh, basically fill it with gin.
Well, well, well. Give it a bit of a shake. And then store it somewhere dry and dark. I've got a few left, but as I said, not enough to do another one, so I'll have to go out picking. Recycling. For the meantime, though, I'll keep drinking the Queen stuff. Mm. Nice. So today kind of got away with me. Uh, by the time I'd gone up to Wills and uh, gone to B&Q and got the bits and pieces I needed, and then got back to the boat and had dinner and all that, it's kind of days gone. Um, I've had a bit of a change of heart with the uh, things for here. So I've made these eight little things. They're kind of, they're all pretty much the same, but it doesn't matter if they're all a little bit different. Fine for them to be individual, but they're yeah, nice little pieces they are. Um, so I'll bore them out with an, well, I was gonna bore them out with a 20 and do it in just that kind of spruce dowel I've got. Um, and even though the curtains aren't going to be particularly heavy, so I don't think it's going to kind of sag at all. I just think this, the oak, once I kind of polish that up a bit with steel, would look quite striking. And the steel kind of everywhere. I'm just thinking on this one here against the fireplace, it would look much better if they were kind of steel rods and kind of polish them up a bit. I reckon that'll look pretty smart. They are quite pricey steel rods but sod it I mean kind of think certainly in the lounge here or you know in the saloon um, and maybe in the galley maybe in the bathroom I could get away with the spruce one and paint it and the bedroom maybe as well a bit softer but I reckon in here it'd be better with that steel so um, and the other reason I think that is because uh, I checked my appointments tomorrow and I'm going to a steel fabricators in Oxford first thing in the morning so they'll probably have some rod there and do myself a little deal right um I've got to put my uh fenders on uh ropes and knots and stuff like that I've got to get myself sorted out with this someone very kindly sent me a deck of knots cards ages ago there's like hundreds of them in here. I've gone through them all. Will has tied the ones on here, and it won't surprise you to know that Will, Will knows exactly what not to do in any given situation. I clearly don't. Um, I've narrowed it down to these four, and you guys will, this is where there'll be some not geeks amongst you that will love this bit. So I've narrowed it down to a fisherman's bend, this hitch, also called the anchor bend, is, idea, is ideal for securing a rope to an anchor or a buoy. Uh, okay, moving on. Bowline. The bowline is a widely used all-purpose loop that can be tied quickly using one of two methods. So that's that sounds... Buntline hitch. The buntline hitch will not come undone even when subjected to a lot of movement. That's pretty much, you know, that's what I need. On square shaled ships... It was once used to secure a line to the bunt. It can, uh, right. Um, or a round turn and two half hitches. And that is the one I have done on this one here. Seems to work. This knot can be used to secure a rope to a pole or ring in a, var in a variety of situations. From, a mooring, from mooring a boat to tying a clothesline. I can read by one, it sounds like I can't. Um, so I reckon I'm gonna do, I'm gonna carry on with the two round, with the round turn and two half hitches. I'm gonna carry on with that one until told otherwise. So please let me know if I'm doing the wrong one. Uh, I can't remember which one Will told me he, he did on them. I don't think it was this one in fairness, but this sounds to be, sounds to me like the one it should be. Secure a rope to a pole. And it, by the pictures, it looks so straightforward, but it's just, it's really not. These things are not, there's no up or down in that one, is there? I guess that's down. Um, yeah, they're not that easy. And I've got to pull that through a couple of times. Oh, help of 
I started on the first bit. That's the working end. See, then this is upside down now. I can't hang that from anything. So that's the working end. Have I got have I got confused already? Yeah. Well, figure one is that, then figure two is like a completely take the working end across then behind the standing part, bring it to the front of the knot again and tuck it behind itself to form a half hitch. Oh, what, what? There is round the back there. Well, it doesn't look like that. Oh yeah, round the back there. Oh no. no, that's not right. Down there. Hang on. That goes round there. Back through there. If I do it exactly how the picture is, that goes up there. Oh. Where the fuck does it go? Oh God! <laughs> this is this is not easy. Make a second half hitch, taking the working end under the standing part. Oh, right. There we go. Yes. Any problem is... Oh, yes. There we go. Bang on. That's another one. Okay. Yeah, it's a nice looking knot, that is. Right. Okay, so. Across, behind, and through. Yes. There we go. Yeah, a little bit of slack on there, but not much. That's what you want. Right, that's four of them done. And to hang it on the boat, I'm going to do the same knot. Now I've got a bit more familiar with it. Fenders are still attached, that's good news. I got a delivery yesterday. And I knew it was coming because someone got in touch with me, Eleanor from the USA. And she has sent me very kindly six towels, bath towels, extra absorbent, fast drying, multi-purpose towels for swimming in the kitchen anyway um look at those fantastic those jazzy colors so six of them that's brilliant so um yeah one for all the kids and everything and one for me amazing thank you very much Anna. that is really kind of you and i might um temporarily use them as curtains if i can get my uh, rods tomorrow from that meeting i go to Anyway, I'll catch you very soon. I am moving the boat by Wednesday, really. Probably back up to North Church, something like that. I've got a month in Berkhamstead. I've been here for two weeks. So, um, yeah, I've got another two weeks to go. And then uh, who knows where. But until next time, take care. Bye-bye.